This is the Grantastic Podcast. Let's start it. All right. We are recording. Welcome to Grantastic. How are you doing, David? I'm good, man. I'm still a little sleepy, so I got my coffee, but no complaints. How about you? We're doing grantastic. Uh, <laughs> see what we did there? Actually, yeah, fun, yeah. fun fact, I found out grantastic is actually like, it's in the dictionary. It's another way of saying fantastic, which I... Uh, really? Yeah, I found that out yesterday I, like, on my free time. I was like, I wonder if grantastic is a... Re- and it's an adjective. Another fun fact for you yeah. folks out there. There you so, go. So yeah, it's... Awesome. it's it's good, but um, so let's just get into it. So uh, you're doing good. Um, how was your, you know, break? I mean, Christmas with the family and stuff. It was good. So I've been, I've been back in Connecticut since like a couple of days before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Um, LA has just been like non-existent all year. Um, yeah. As far as like photography and stuff like that, there hasn't been too much for me to do. Um, so I talked to my mom and she was like, you should just come home for like the whole holidays, like get tested and stuff. And my buddy, um, James was in New York and he had to leave his car in LA. So me and Albert, uh, my roommate just drove his car out to him like right before Thanksgiving. So it worked out. We didn't have to like get on a plane or anything like that. So yeah, I've been at home for two months, which has been like kind of relaxing, you know, and it's been great being with the family. Um, it's a little bit weird when I'm here for too long. Cause I get like kind of stagnant and like, settled here again Bro, so, like, i feel it i feel the thought it. Of, like going back to la now is like oh my god but uh yeah it's been overall just like really great you know i love oh. being with my family spend time with my dogs it's great yeah man that's that's the best thing I, I feel it you know like i think it's good to be with family and just like reconnect and see them when you can because you know living out in la and like tucson yeah. for me like you know it, it's it's nice to get that chance to see them and uh reconnect but i feel the stagnant when you're here too long yeah, yeah. And like with me i share a room with my brother so it feels oh, okay. like high school a little again and yeah, i'm just like yeah you get back oh. in like your old routines yeah exactly yeah. and then my mom's like take out the fucking trash do yeah. this do that and it's like yeah. what is happening right now like yeah, yeah but it's nice to be home and help out when i can you know yeah so that's that's great to hear and yeah. I mean, you talked about photography so like let's get into it so like what like how did this all happen like what got you into photography you know um when i was in high school i can't remember the year but like when instagram first came out Mm -hmm. i remember it was like super niche and like when you know like people my age like high schoolers started finding it it was like i guess like it's probably a meme now but like to like post photos of like your meals and stuff like that's what everyone was doing yeah and like (laughs) random stuff like that and I I noticed the discover page or would the trending whatever it was on Instagram mm-hmm. when it first came out and I noticed like actual photographers like posting real photos and I was like damn how do I get on like this page like and like I want to do what they're doing and stuff so I like very quickly got like super serious about like I mean it wasn't serious I was going out with my like you know iphone 3 or whatever okay like, yeah taking, yeah like, artsy <laughs> photos of like trees and like rocks and like random like road signs and stuff but uh that was like the first time I was like damn like photography is pretty cool like you know and then when I got into college I bought my first um digital camera just this like crappy little Nikon um but I didn't really do much with it it wasn't until I met one of my buddies uh Jordan from Connecticut who was making music at the time and he was like hey you have a camera right like you take photos I was like yeah yeah and uh he's like let's do a shoot so we like took some photos and he's like let's like do a video for one of my songs like just on the spot and it was all like garbage but like he was the first one that like really got me like into it and then through him I was able to meet like Matt and Zero and like yeah uh, Connecticut people um and then I met Albert uh Natalie Green and you know so like yeah shout out to all of them these are great yeah dude like meeting Jordan I always talk to him about it like kind of spread it out and I would met like everyone so shout out to Jordan honestly shout out shout out to Jordan because that's how I met Matt and Haley yeah exactly right FaceTime Jordan go back far enough Jordan's like Jordan is the one who connected everything connected everyone dude so shout out to him and um yeah so I guess it's just like 
initially Instagram, I was like, I want to be on the popular page, you know? Yeah, oh, bro, I remember the trends and stuff. And now, yeah. like, that's that's the way to do it. And I guess, yeah. you know, you know, I mean, this was a question I had, but we, I mean, later, but I can get into it now because you brought up Instagram. Is that, like, how has social media uh, helped in change your ideas when doing photography? Um, I mean it's it's kind of like a gift and a curse i mean i feel like it's kind of corny to say like oh i hate you know social media when like without social media like pretty much all of us you know wouldn't have yeah. anything you know like bro we yeah all um so definitely like I, w I wouldn't be you know doing what i'm doing if it wasn't for like instagram coming out and then like you know twitter and all that you know it's all like in the same pot um but it definitely feels a little bit restrictive like um like i i feel like sometimes like i'm an instagram photographer you know like mm. i don't really do much outside that like i've gone on tour and like done all this stuff but like um at the end of the day like most of my stuff just ends up on social media so while i'm like super grateful for it and i'm as it's pretty small but like i'm super grateful for the platform i have on it like I'd love for like one day, like when I'm a bit older, just like to like not have Instagram, like just be able to put my work out like some other way, you know? But yeah, like you own a I website or something. And just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's how people could go. Like, like I remember people using, I think it was Tumblr or something like, like that's yeah. where they, they just upload like, like my portfolio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You 35 yeah. milligram, you know, film, whatever your photos. Yeah, hashtag 35 millimeter. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was exactly. me for sure. That was me for sure. Yeah, bro. But I think that's great. I think that's like, uh, the move to like, I don't know, this year I've been trying to get away from, you know, do less social media, even though like you needed to promote. Yeah. I was talking to Daniel, you know, from New York and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, shout out to Daniel. Love him. Daniel. And nice. like, he was just like telling me basically like he's taking a break and, you know, and I was like, bro, I want to join you on that boat because like, it's so important. Like, did you know, like you seen the social dilemma? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole thing about how like, you know, the show, you know, Twitter people or Instagram people, they don't let their fucking kids go on the, you know, use them. And yeah, that part like right. blew my fucking mind. And I've talked yeah. about it on this before, but like, it just shows you how like they knew how like, they knew like, oh, this is gonna fuck up people think we should oh, not let our sure. children. For sure. Yeah, I think it's definitely important to, to take a break every once in a while. Like, I mean, I'm I'm guilty of like the first thing I do in the morning is like open up my phone and like mm -hmm. open Twitter, you know, like yeah. I don't even really like tweet super often anymore. Um, but it's still like daily, like I'm checking it all the it's time. It's your routine, you know. Exactly. I, I want to move away from it a little bit, you know. Yeah, it's like I realized, you know, I took last month kind of off, and I realized like you have so much fucking free time. It's like to the oh, point God. where you're like, well, what do I do with this? Like, holy right. shit. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, it's like a it's like a crutch, like, because when I do find myself having free time and like should be productive, it's like, like a nervous tick, you know, it's like, I don't yeah. know, like, and then I open up my phone and there. Yeah, it yeah. A hundred percent. I feel the it. TikTok is. Oh, the, I got into TikTok this year. It's hilarious. There's like so much funny stuff on there. But dude, like, you'll feel like you're on TikTok for like 20 minutes and like an hour will go by. It is awful. Bro, and you watch like 10 second videos, you know, and it's just like, you the just keep going is dangerous it, yeah. it goes forever and like yeah. i did tiktok like i was on there and i kind of but then i i just deleted it because i knew this was not gonna end well but then you know could i go on instagram instagram has insta reels so that's yeah. what fucking caught me it's still the same thing as tiktok yeah, and, it's like Snap and snapchat does the same thing so it's yeah. like you could go on there and like you could just watch something and it's like some of it's funny and some of it's great and it, but at the same time i'm just like like I'm looking at it and just take like I say to myself, okay, right, take a five minute break while I'm just doing a paper or something. And then I look at the time and it's yeah. like an hour, two hours. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This is due in like thirty. Been melting for an hour. Yeah, it's like what the fuck, man. Yeah. That there, there's have to you guys. I think there's like I think it's fine to do it and stuff, but you gotta like discipline yourself in some way just to make yeah. sure you still get your stuff and you're still living your life. <laughs> yeah it's so interesting but you know going back to like photography and film and all of that uh you know who are people who inspire you I mean because you were kind of starting it out and figuring it out but like when you got into it were there like any 
photographers and movie directors that like really caught your eye that got really honed into this? Um, I feel like the first director, well, I mean, the first movie that like really like kind of fucked me up. Sorry, I don't know. No, swear. We this is okay. a this is a swear podcast. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. The first movie that like really blew my mind um was I was I think it was like my freshman year of college and I was taking a communication class and we had to watch American Beauty and that movie just like blew my mind. That was the first movie that made me go like I want to make people feel the way this movie made me feel. Okay, so, yeah. And then it like, you know, I didn't like immediately go like studying, but then uh I started later on that year, the next year I started getting into like Tarantino's movies, you know, like I watched like Pulp Fiction for the first time, I'm like the Kill Bills and stuff. And I was just like, this dude's a madman. Like, and that was the first time I think I noticed like style within a director, you know, like yeah. the movies were very different, but like they all had a signature style, like super violent, like quick, like witty and stuff. Um, and then from there, I just like, I don't know. I, I like, I definitely like, a lot of directors like PTA and like Fincher, Gods, of course. But um, I like I watch like anything, man. Like, bro, I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not like a huge like like. There's been moments where I'm like, I need to treat like watching movies like studying because like I want to write movies one day. Like that's like my main goal is like, I want to write mu- movies. Um, yeah. So I've been like, I gotta study. Like I gotta like read scripts and da da da. Which like I do here and there, but like I just love movies, man. And like. I've talked about this with, with friends before and it's like, it's cool to like only watch like classic movies and like, you know, the greats, like, you know, a thousand and yeah. one movies to watch before you die. Like all, all, all the staple stuff is good. But like, I also like just like the garbage stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. I watch Netflix originals. I watch like stuff on Hulu, like, yeah, bro. cause it's like, if you're only watching the great stuff, like that's, that's all you have in your mind, you know, like there's, you got, there's the spectrum, you know, like you gotta like, and, and even bad movies like do something for you, you know, like they evoke an emotion within you. Like there's a reason you don't like him. Like there's something that was done wrong in that movie, you know? And like, when you notice that, like that helps you as much as watching a great movie or it's like, these are all the things that they did great that like you want to emulate, you know? So it's like, I just like, I'm like a garbage disposal for movies. Like doesn't Bro, matter which I of the feel it. I'm watching them. Like I also just don't like the pressure of like, I got to watch like, you know like this and that and like you know like like i still haven't seen like so many classics like the godfathers i haven't seen all the way through i haven't seen like forrest gump like mm-hmm. casablanca citizen kane like i haven't seen all those and like they're on my list and i'll get to them but like yeah casablanca is solid for sure yeah and like i'll go see them one day but it's like at night it's like i open netflix i'm like oh netflix original like, just, <laughs> uh, you know i just like movies man i like i like stories i like it's just like, like it's like when you like really get into a movie like and just like so like my favorite all-time movie is her like that's just like her yeah her you ever seen her oh her yeah dude. yeah yeah her. yeah like like but like i didn't re- like i got really like that's you know like you know i, I first watched it i cried second time oh. i watched it with my brother we both cried and yeah. like and like but then i got like not obsessed but like i really and but the music in it is super amazing and like then i realized like the composer like arcade fire the band mm. they composed one of the songs and stuff yeah. And I realized like the tension they create in the music, it's like, yeah. it's a, it's literally, they, it resembles, they really like focused on making sure uh, it resembles like how uh, Theodore, you know, the character feels. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, everything has a purpose. When you really like dissect a movie, there's a purpose of why this song is here yeah. and why. You see all the pieces like coming together and like perfectly. Yeah, and that movie is so relevant today, I feel like, especially with oh, this yeah. whole pandemic, like you love someone, but like, you know, it's, but you're alone, and you're trying mm-hmm. to find someone, and it's just yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah, that movie is a trip, man. It's God tier, for sure. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And, and the coloring, you know, when you watch oh, movies, yeah. and when you see like the color, like that color, is, they show a lot of like bright colors in it. So it's yeah, very... Yeah. Uh, unique but yeah i think that's great that like you know you, like that's cool that you want to make movies and stuff and like are you down you know when this will happen for you are you down to do any type of fucking genre or will you or is there like a specific genre you're wanting um to do? so i really like like coming of age dramas and i know it's like so oversaturated now mm-hmm. um but i always said like the first movie 
that I write um, will be like a coming of age just because oh, like yeah. that's where my heart is, you know, like that's mm-hmm. when I first fell in love with movies, it was like all like the teen, like high school coming of age stuff. Like, yeah. Good or bad. You know, I loved them. I just is. Um, so, yeah, I have I have this uh, this this movie right now that I'm I've been very slowly like writing um, for the past couple of years. Um, and I, yeah, I'm not going to say anything because like, it's, it's nothing right now, you know? So there's nothing to like, you know, no script or anything, but like in my head and just like, I've been like writing characters and stuff, but it feels really special. Um, oh yeah. So I want to finish that script at some point and you know, that's going to be the first thing that I write. I don't know if it'll be the first thing I make. I don't, first thing that I make, I don't really care, but I want to make sure I write that. Um, cause it's been with me for so long. Um, so yeah, definitely like coming of age dramas is my favorite genre, but I'd love to to make like a horror movie one day. Yeah. I think horror is such like an underrated genre because I feel like it's very similar to comedy where the genre is like very oversaturated with a lot of bad stuff. Mm-hmm. But like when you get a horror or a comedy movie that's like top tier, it's like incredible, you know? Mm-hmm. Like something like like super bad tier like comedies it's like yeah that special, you, know? you know what i mean mm-hmm. um it will live on like forever movie, like like the og halloween like i think is one of the greatest movies ever made like it's just like mm-hmm. so nuanced so like the score like everything i love that movie um so yeah i'd like to do a horror one day um but yeah nothing like yeah i don't want to be like no specific genre you know i just want to like write whatever i'm inspired by yeah you know? definitely so, and I yeah. think I think that's incredible. You want to do that, and that's awesome. And like, I I don't even know how the fucking process of that even works. You know, like how how does one even get into? You just have is it is it is it like music per se, where it's just like you just gotta know connections. And that's how it all works out. Yeah, that's probably because I I still don't know. I just I just know right now I want to write, and it's I think it's easier for me to know that I want to write than work like, uh, like technically on a movie. Um you know, like be like a DP or like something like that. Cause it's like, at least like as a writer, like I can do that from my room, like on my computer, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So like, even if I don't have an in, I can still just like be writing. And that's not to say like, if you want to be like an editor or a, you know, cinematographer or whatever, you can't practice on your own too. But I just like the idea of like, I can do that, like sitting on the computer. Um, And like directing would be cool one day. Cause I originally wanted to be a director. I was like, I want to make movies like I want, yeah. to write, direct, <laughs> I want to do all of it I want to shoot it and then I realized that like I don't really like um manning a camera I like photography um but I've like filmed for some people in the past and like I don't I get too like anxious about like am I like I'm fucking it up you know like I'm yeah. off focus I'm like you know like the frame isn't right and stuff and it's like so then I realized, like, I don't like the pressure. Even with photography, I get like that. Like, I'm so in my head. I'm not satisfied until, like, I get my scans back from yeah. getting my film developed. Like, I'm stressing out. Every time I shoot, I'm like, I fucked that up. Like, it's going to be terrible. And I get the scans back. And, like, I hate a lot of it. But then there's, like, a couple good ones. So I'm like, all right. Like, you know we're I mean? good. We're good. I feel, um, like, I feel like that's everyone. You know, you, you, just oh, want, sure. you just want the best. You know, you just want to, like... Yeah. And that, yeah. that, that's better than having someone who just takes it. It's like, okay, we're good. Instead of like, okay, let's do one more just to make sure, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know about you, but I've, I've realized about myself recently that being an artist, like, I hate the process so much, which I've yeah. heard you're supposed to love the process, but I love, like, the result. Like, you know, like, the process of it is so, like, extraneous for me and, like, stressful and, like, mentally, like, you know, challenging. Um, but it's the result that it's like, like I said, I get like scans of film back and I'm like, this is why I do it. Like, cause that feeling of like seeing like the thing that you made or hearing it or, you know, whatever, um, and being happy with it is like, makes everything else worth it. Mm-hmm. So I realized about myself, like, I'm not a process guy, like at all. Um, I fight through the process and then like, I get to the result and I'm like, this is why I fight through that. You know? I, I, I like, I, I feel it in a similar way. Like I like, you know, I love like the end result for sure, yeah. but I do, I do love like producing, like, you know, coming up with like, you know, the melody and forming the structure of it. But the yeah. part where it's like, where I struggle and God bless Matthew, AKA Mafusa, <laughs> as I name him, the mixing and mastering. 
that oh, is a wizard, man. that's a bitch that is so fucking hard and that like that's tedious and then like one sounds good but then for some reason this other sound isn't good and then you get this one weird fucking other sound that you're like where fucking track is this one buzzing sound coming from yeah, yeah. and then it's just a whole mess and then your, your ears get fatigued and it's just like you're just like what did i accomplish today <laughs> and like it's just it drains you like mixing and mastering is the part that i hate the most i uh you know yeah I can imagine it's just and like shout out to matt because like he he's been grinding on that and also he got his speakers his monitors yeah. the set you know he's been it and like he's, he's crazy i've like i like you know pop into his room and stuff like when he's when he's like mixing and mastering and stuff and he's just like He's a machine, Bro. man. When yeah, he, he's, when he's working on a track, like hours go by and like oh, he's just like, dialed 100, in. You know? 100%. And he has, and he like, you know, he has his notes and he's like, you know, he, he he's taken it so seriously and he like That's has. He's a guy that loves the process. Yeah. I love the process. He loves yeah. the process and he, and like. He'll tell he, you that he doesn't too. You know, he'll, he'll like complain about it. But like when you see him zoned in and like he doesn't see that you're watching him, you know, like when you see someone and they don't know they're being watched, like doing the thing that they love, like you can tell he loves working. Oh, on he, and he can talk about it for hours. And that's what I love yeah. about him. Like, and he has no problem explaining something like whatever, like a thousand times if the person doesn't understand, cause he just, it's, it's just true happiness. And like, yeah. I, I honestly think like Matt's going to make it for sure as an audio engineer, like, you know, he's just so committed and like, he'll spend hours watching tutorials and just like yeah. taking, and that's like the way to do it. You don't need to go to college or whatever to right. like learn about, like I did it. And I just realized like graduating this year, like what the fuck have I achieved? <laughs> and like, where a fucking, what job am I really going to get after college? Like, that's what I've realized. It's just like, right, right. It's that's like a whole nother fucking like topic, you know, we can get into It's like, you know, you said you went to college. Uh, what was your, major if you don't mind me asking like i majored in communication and minored in business so like okay so the business help general like degree i could get because i didn't really know what i wanted to go to school for mm -hmm. um and when i was doing my gen eds my freshman year i took a communication course and i was like this is cool um i like it so i was like man i'll just major in this you know and then hell yeah you know halfway through my my college um career uh my counselor was like, you could, uh, because of the course you've taken, you could just do a, a minor in business and you only have to take like a couple more classes to get that done because you're pretty close to it and it would look better um, having a minor too. And I was like, all right. So I did, you know, a communication major and minored in business and it was like focused on like advertising. Mm -hmm. um, but I got out of college and quickly realized like, I don't want to work in like you know, like a, I don't want to work for like an advertisement. You don't want to work for the like, fucking man. Yeah, basically. And it's tough because like, you know, I, I talk about this with my mom all the time and she's like, I get like, you're doing what you're doing, but like, you need to like work and like, you know, you need insurance and you need to like pay your bills and stuff. And it's like, yeah, I get it. And it's like, hundred percent. I'm always feeling like I'm getting so old. Right. Um, Yes. But like when I'm talking to her about those things, I realize like I'm young. So I'm going to try to make this work for as long as I can while I'm young enough to do so. You know, I, uh, I a hundred percent know what you mean. Everything you just said is literally yeah. what I'm dealing with, especially yeah. with my mom. And it's just like, it's like you, you, you live in a fantasy. You got to have a pension. You got to have like health yeah. insurance. It's like, I'm pretty sure not any musician has that unless you're like signed or you right. have enough money. So it's like, I, right. I yeah so i i get it i feel it and i think our yeah, parents and i'm i'm really lucky where my parents like completely support me it's just like my mom has like her mom like worries you know yeah 100 percent. just like, like she's she's been the greatest like same with my dad throughout like me wanting to do this um but like i just talked to her and you know she worries about money and stuff so yeah it's natural um but yeah i am i'm super grateful that like they support me and they're not like telling me like you need to give up and you know they're just yeah like, they're just like we're worried like you know like you can do all this but like still have a job you know and i'm like yeah that makes sense um 100 percent. you know so. you gotta pay bills yeah exactly you know it's you gotta pay to live <laughs> exactly man exactly yeah. but like keep following your dream and stuff what prompted you to move from the east coast to california you know besides the weather and all that yeah. good shit <laughs> um, funny enough um haley actually gets mad at me about this all the time i am not like 
a super warm weather person like oh really <laughs> i like i love like the rain and like fall weather and like when it starts getting a little cold um which california gets like none of that except for like very sparingly like during their winter months you know yeah but um uh, i don't know i finished i went to school in connecticut to uh college and i graduated and albert was in texas at the time and he was moving to california and we were getting pretty close at the time and he was like you should move to california after you know like we can get stuff done and stuff and I was like, all right, I've been in Connecticut my whole life. Like I could use a change, you know? So I was just mm-hmm. like, pack it up and let's go. And I was out there for a year and fell flat on my face. Like I was not having fun. And so I moved back to Connecticut for a year. That was like mid 2017 when I came back home. Okay. And then I was here for a year. Um, and then summer of 2018 I moved back out to California I was like you know I recharged I was feeling a bit better about it I think like graduating college and then going right there was a mistake for me because it takes me a while to like you know like get confident and feel comfortable and stuff and I was kind of just like making the biggest life change that Mm -hmm. you could make like I'm not very great at those so um it didn't work out so I think like coming back home for a year and like recharging and like kind of knowing what I was getting myself into like the second time around um, made it work a lot better because yeah, I've been there since 2018 now and it's been great. I'm loving yeah, it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, initially you know, I was just, it wasn't a huge reason. Albert was just like, come out here. And I was like, I want to do, you know, photo and video and writing and stuff. And it's like, that's probably the best place to do it. Connecticut's yeah. not a huge like photography scene. So I was like, let's do it, you know? Yeah. And since you've been out to like, you know, California, have you built those connections and like stuff? And has it has moving there to California helped with the photography? Has that like let you meet other people? I mean, definitely because because my first roommate was Roy. Um, Mm. I moved in with him in 2016 and we actually didn't we were roommates for like a year and we didn't not like each other, but we just weren't like really friends. We shared a room and he was working on Cat Heaven. So like. Mm he was working on music all day, every day. And, you know, he had a studio in our bedroom. So it was like, I just kind of stayed out of his way because he was working on music. So we didn't really talk that much until like a couple months before I moved back to Connecticut. We like started planning um, a video for, which we did for perfume. Um, So we were watching a bunch of movies and stuff like that, figuring out what we want to do for the video. And then, you know, I moved back like, to Connecticut so I went back out there to shoot the video I was back and forth in the year that I was here and then uh yeah I started you know shooting for him and doing stuff like that um I've done a lot of work with with Albert um I haven't really made like crazy big connections you know but definitely what I've done out there in my small amount of time is like stuff that like I dreamed of when I was younger so oh yeah if nothing more like if I never get any bigger than I am now like you know I like toward the states i went to europe you know i've shot yeah i've done a lot of photography that i'm super proud of so it's like i've you know like when you really sit down and think about it it's like i've done a lot of what i've done you know like i don't have to get like massive and famous you know like i'm i'm you know like i don't know so i i I feel it like i think people you gotta have like reality check and realize like you know I, people think like fame and money is what like the ideal goal and it's like it's not because like you lose part of your life your soul because like yeah. then like for you know paparazzis and stuff you can't have fun you can't go out you can't do like the simple pleasure of things you like like a normal human can do so i think yeah. you can hit like this middle spot where it's like make enough money you do what you love but and you're you're well kind of well known but not crazy i think yeah. that's the money spot yeah yeah sure. i don't ever want to be i think that's another reason why i like I mean, I, besides the fact that, like, I'm not talented in front of a camera, you know, or, like, anything like that. But, like, I went – I picked behind the camera for a lot of my work because it's just, like, I don't like being in the spotlight at all. Yeah. So, it's, like, yeah, I would love – like, goal is just, like, yeah, make enough money to, you know, live my life and just kind of, mm-hmm. like, be normal, you know? Bro, I – I want to be a normal guy. <laughs> like, I, I feel – I think that's, like, what everyone wants to do. And, like, that's the move. And, yeah, man, that's that's so cool. And you went over to Europe. You were mentioning yeah. like what is like i mean i don't know if you had time to like see other like paintings or like 
photos of other photographers. But when you went over to Europe and you did like photography for Roy and stuff, yeah. was there anything different that you saw from over there versus the States, how they were taking photos or if you had time for that? Um, dude, it was so quick. We, it was like, I think we were there for like 10 days or something. Oh, and damn. Did, it was a quick- we did six shows in like different countries or, you know, cities. Um, so everything moved really quickly. So I feel like sometimes I feel like it was such a, like a blip that I don't remember any of it. Um, I'm glad I took like, I was like, you know, I was so touristy and was on my phone. I had my cameras and stuff, but I was on my phone taking pictures of literally everything. So I like go back and look at those and it's like, it almost feels like it wasn't real life that I was even there. Like oh, if man. I didn't have the pictures on my phone, you know, like the photo proof of it, I would forget that it even happened. But, um, Europe's so cool. I would love to go back and like actually visit there. Um, The architecture there is beautiful. Like I was taking pictures of so many buildings um, and it's just like, yeah, it feels like the air is different there. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, I mean, you're not in your home anymore. You know, you're somewhere Uh, else. It feels like it for sure. Yeah. Place where Um, they just, yeah, they don't speak English. Maybe it's like a whole different like world and stuff. Yeah, exactly. but yeah, like we went to like Amsterdam and that was, it was beautiful there, you know? Bro, that's a trip. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's yeah. awesome. You know, like that place is, I went there once with my family and it was super mm-hmm. cool because like, um, you know, I had like, you know, weed ice cream with my mom and stuff. Oh, like yeah. That. And yeah, like, dude, there's like lining all the like uh, stores is all like these drug stores and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like so shrooms, like, in your face you know, about all it. this shit. Exactly. I'm just like, I was like, dude, where am I? Like, that's yeah. Uh, it, it's definitely a trip. It's like, yeah. it's, a, it's definitely a cool place. But yeah, I think just like traveling and doing that's like that's literally like everyone's goal to do a tour or like to be the photographer for an yeah. artist. It's like that must have been like, like yeah, that was like one of my first goals. You know, when I was yeah, started, it was like I want to go on tour for someone. You know, yeah, definitely. And I got to do it twice. You know, which was incredible. A hundred percent, and be sent since then has the bar risen for you of like new goals and expectations and stuff that you were even though we're in a pandemic like still have some goals and stuff yeah i mean well that's that's the funny thing like i was saying before like i have to kind of sit down and realize like i did that and that was really cool because i'm still now i'm at the point where it's like man like i haven't really done anything i want to like i need to do something bigger and better you know like I, and then it's like dude you went on two tours you know but um i would like to work in print more um with my photos just talking about goals it's always been a, a goal of mine to put out like a full photo book um so hopefully one day i can do that um i think that would be really cool um obviously like working like magazines and stuff but as as time goes on i'm like my my focus is shifting a bit to to writing so i think that's like there's definitely still like some photo goals i have but like what i really want to do is write and like get very disciplined in like that mm. facet of my life like i want to i want to be able to like say i'm a writer and yeah. believe myself when i say it, you know mm-hmm, that's, like, that's probably my next goal is like become a writer you know like in my hell mind yeah, yeah. yeah. hell yeah so, i i feel that for sure i think that's that's awesome. And like, I think those are goals you got to pursue and stick with. Cause I feel like yeah, yeah. it's so easy to get discouraged and like burn out or something like, mm. believe me, I feel it. I get it. Yeah. And it's like, so it's awesome that you stick with that. And like, are there like people, would you say like, so everyone has, you know, you know, someone who they look up to big director and stuff like that. We, as we talked about already, but like, are there people like our age, you know, that you just like, damn, you, you look at them and they're not huge yet, but you're like, fuck, this person's going to be amazing. And like, I look up to their work, like your friend group, I guess I could say. My friend, I mean, yeah, like my friend group is like my main source of inspiration, obviously. Um, Roy, I think is going to be a star. He's amazing. Yeah. You know, um, I think Albert has, besides, you know, I mean, they're, everyone's good, but like Albert has one of the freakiest work ethics of anyone I, I know, um, which inspires me a lot. You know, like, He's like, like, we're both like kind of nerds and we just like play video games all the time, like kick it. And then, you know, we have our phases where like work and play and stuff. Um, but when he goes into work mode, he's like, he's there all night. He's like, he's going to work until like 
he d- finishes what he started, you know? Um, oh, yeah. And that inspires me a lot. We talked about Matt. He's incredible. Yeah, um, Matt's going to be a huge. He's, a wizard. he's another weirdo. Like I say weirdo and like with the utmost respect, you know? Yeah, like, no, of like, course I, I get it. Freak. Like he blows my mind, you know? Um, and then my, my friend James, uh, he's like one of the most inspiring people in my life. You know, like he's, he does, he does everything, you know, he makes music, he draws, he writes, he, he makes clothes. Um, and he just like works so hard. And I think he's going to be huge. He's been, um, out in, he's my friend out in New York, um, recently. And he's just been, you know, doing his thing. He's great. Um, my friend, Jack Ender toy Ender <laughs> I always make fun of his name. Uh, he's, uh, he's become like really, really one of my best friends in the past couple of years. Um, it's funny because he was on the first tour with Roy um, hey, okay. he was playing guitar for him and he, was, and he did production on Cat Heaven. Uh, and we were like acquainted, but like weren't really good friends. Um, and then we ended up being roommates on tour, like in the hotels. And I think after that we became super close, but he's another one of my friends. He's just like really talented. Um, and he's like me. We're like, he, he works all the time, but like never really puts stuff out because I think he just like sets a really high bar for himself. Um, but, you know, I think he's going to be successful. And then uh, I don't know if you know my friend Joseph. I don't he's, think uh, so. He's, uh, he's, he's from, I think he's from like Maryland. I'm not sure. So sorry, Joseph, I got that wrong. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he's a writer. I've, I've like retweeted his work before on my Twitter. Um, and he is like one of the craziest dudes I know. Like that man has discovered more than 24 hours in a day, like with yeah. all the stuff he's able to do. Uh, so yeah, I got a lot of friends that inspire me, you know. Yeah, so, man, I think yeah, I think cool. that's... I wanted to like say all my friends' names because like I no, feel go bad. Uh, okay, of course you but, shout but them yeah, out. You know, like everyone, if I forgot you, obviously Haley inspires me too. Her yeah. project is amazing. She's she's wild, you know, because she just like one day was like, I want to make music and yeah, hell, hell, just, like, good. You know, project, dude. You know what I mean? Like, so she inspires me a lot. Um, I want her to make more music though yeah that's what like make some more music literally like what like i'm saying like like just taking Haley aside like yeah she has so much potential and like i'm so grateful to matt and zero or jordan i'll say to you know into because like yeah she has a voice you know and like it yeah yeah so she just has to like and that's the thing that's where it gets like hard for people because like if you have a voice and you could do it it's just like you gotta be financial like you have pay rent and shit you get yeah, to balance yeah. it and shit but yeah there's so much potential with Haley for sure i i see yeah, it every gonna, day and she'll send me think, demos. i think this year has just been rough like there's not she's, she feels like there's nothing to really like write about with music you know what i mean which i get because this whole past year has been like such a drag but mm-hmm. yeah i'm excited to to hear new music that she makes whenever that time comes she's like, yeah man a hundred percent a hundred percent and i think yeah. you make a huge it was great working with her too like shooting her mm-hmm. being able to work on her cover and okay. we did a you did together. you did you did the uh album cover yeah yeah yeah, yeah bet yeah so, clean it was clean i love it it was super you. yeah it was fun she's very hands-on so she like guided me through exactly what she wanted for that so it was okay. really cool working uh on that with her mm-hmm. and you did the music video for uh red chevy yep yeah, we yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fire. yeah, we've made some cool stuff together. Um, she's always a pleasure to work with, you know. Mm-hmm. She's like I said, super hands on, like she knows exactly what she wants across Bro. the board. Like, yep, I know, I know. For visual producing. audio, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's great because it, it, it makes it easier, like instead of me just winging it. Like, I, yeah, I prefer that when someone like tells me exactly what they want. You know? mm-hmm. It gives me a clearer view and idea. So, yeah, I, I think that's great. And I was going to say also just like, having like a gr- like a friend group where they're all inspiring and like like that helps so much and motivates you and it brings the confidence you're like damn i'm yeah. with these people like look at the like w- we live the same life and shit and right. it's like if they could do it so can i and it's exactly. like it's like the best feeling ever and i don't think like it's so easy for people to get discouraged and shit and it's like like the point like i want people to realize is that like anything is possible you just gotta like stick with it even when it gets fucking hard like there of course yeah. there's gonna be hard times but that's that's the grind as everyone yeah, talks about sure. like it's not gonna be like easy the whole way you know mm-hmm. it's not gonna be a clear-cut path either yeah everyone's and, path is different um yeah, yeah it's so different and it's like you don't you don't know like 
like that's the thing with the future you don't know how it's gonna fucking turn out you just gotta like trust your gut and go with the things that you're passionate about and stick with it instead of just like copying other people's paths you know you gotta do what's best right, for right. you best for david best for grant you know yeah it's, it's like, definitely unique to you like what mm-hmm. you should be doing you know what i mean yeah um, man yeah it's good to like like you were saying like having friends around you that inspire you you know that's like should that should be everyone's number one goal is like surround yourself with people who inspire you to be better you know yeah that's like that's like the biggest 2021 like 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 memo i give to myself is like we're gonna be with like you know, people who like make us feel good and like actually give a shit, like not the fakes. Like we want to no, be yeah. with, like the people, people who are like real with you, you know, mm-hmm. keep it 100. I don't want someone to say, oh, yeah, amazing. But really, that didn't listen. I want someone to be like, OK, this is what you need to fix here and here. It's good, but you need to critique like someone to actually yeah. fully go into it like with us. Yeah, like, I think the, one of the most damaging things is when you surround yourself with a bunch of yes men. Yes, 100 like, percent, you know let it's, everything you do slide and you know give you no honest like feedback on anything whether it's your art or just like real life like mm-hmm. as a person you know what i mean like i don't know you oh, know, real, you're friends, real friends will like give you give you honest like opinions on things you know? yeah and, that, and that's and that's what we need like, yeah i don't want to be surrounded by people who are just like yeah cool like sounds good or yeah good. because it doesn't help you flourish like you don't grow um, you don't realize the mistakes you make yeah, and the longer you're around stuff like that, like the worse you get at taking real criticism mm-hmm. when the time does come because yeah. you're so used to people not criticizing you at all, you know? So yeah, I think man. it's good, you know, to have eye openers every now and then from your friends. Oh, yeah, 100%. I, I, uh, like everything you've been preaching, I feel it. So yeah, yeah. hell yeah, man. That's crazy. Yeah. But then I guess, like, where do you see yourself in, like, you know, let's just keep let's say 10 let's keep it 10 we're not gonna we're not gonna you know you know we're not gonna we're not gonna go crazy with like i'm gonna say Dude, 20 i don't even know what i'm gonna have dinner tonight man. <laughs> <laughs> um so what did you say how many years i said 10 i kept just like a short not a giant number i said 10 so that's like what, what are you like you're in your 20s with me right now so like you know maybe 30s 30 god that's hard man. that's a scary number i'm gonna be honest i feel like 30s. honestly if you here to tell you where i want to be like in like 30 or 40 years because i actually know that for sure okay okay let's start let's go with that let's like i guess it's like you know like my dream like where i want to be you know it's like Mm -hmm. i want to like i said i want to write and do all this stuff um but i want to end up like in like a really small house like on a beach in like a really really small beach town oh yeah uh, and just like like I said earlier, just like be normal, like live, you know, like yeah. I've, I've made money from like what I'm doing and like still do that. But like, I don't want to, I'm in LA now, but like, I don't want to be in the city forever. You know what I mean? Like I want to like, I'm a recluse. Like I want to be, I'm a very homebody type guy. Like, yeah. And I love the beach. Um, Rhode Island specifically is like, those are my favorite beaches in the world, which is funny. Cause they're like not the most beautiful or picturesque mm-hmm. or anything. I love Rhode Island. Um, yeah, that's what I would just want to be like in a small little beach house. You know what I mean? Bro, I, I feel like I think the big people who have this idea and I appreciate going with the question. Uh, uh, people have like, oh, the cities, it's whatever. Some people, it works for them. But it's like, I feel that it's like, it's just like, I think if you get a little taste of the city in your lifetime, then you, hell yeah. But like, I don't know. I don't want to be surrounded by all these fucking people. And especially yeah, exactly. if another pandemic happens again, I want to be yeah. somewhere safe. Get way out of the way. Yeah. And it's like, you just want to like, I, I, I love nature. So, yeah, you know, I want to be with nature. And like, like the thing you were talking about, fresh air, like when you're in Europe, like when I go yeah. to Tahoe, like you could feel the fresh air versus like if you go to San Francisco, like yeah, there's yeah. a huge fucking difference. And you just feel yeah, much happier from la to new york to drop the car off over thanksgiving like when you're in like middle of the country like on some random like freeway and you get out at a rest stop like and you're just like wow like yeah you know it's crazy it like it just brings your happiness like when you have like real fresh air and just being in nature like that's why it's like it's crazy and it's so important like for like the stuff we want to do it's mostly stuff we do indoors so it's like and when you do a lot of work it's like 
you could do it for hours and you could be there on your, you know, writing a script on your laptop or like making a beat or something. It's like, it's so good to like go outside and just get that. Yeah. And that's what I've been trying to do. I, I literally was trying to build like, <laughs> a, like an outdoor studio type shit, whatever, just throwing my speakers oh, out there shit. and just like, so did yeah. I have my fresh air and stuff, but then my right. neighbors got, were complaining <laughs> and then calling they my were, mom. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like saying like can you tell your son to like turn down the sub and i was like okay yeah. i'm sorry yeah. so yeah so it, it, it we we need to figure that out with them still but it's like yeah man it's so it's so like important just to like have all that and just i don't know i think it's so important and stuff and i guess with quarantine and stuff has there like because i feel like there's a lot of time on our hands now and stuff um yeah. have what have what have you done to take this time? Like, cause a lot of people were just like, you know, leveling up as they were saying, yeah. or like. So it's funny you mentioned like how important it is to like be outside. And like, you know, I mentioned like fresh air and stuff because at the beginning of quarantine, like I completely did not do that at all. I didn't you were in like, LA, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we live in like, I live like kind of, in you know like west hollywood in like a busier area but like we live off in like a residential type area so it's yeah. not too crazy so like you know i go for like walks now out there like in the morning you know i wake up and get my blood flowing but the first few months of quarantine like i just stayed in my room like and did you know i did not go outside like my blinds were closed i was like you know down bad like i didn't know what i was doing um and i think that really affected me because i wasn't getting any work done um I wasn't really doing anything besides just like watching movies, I guess, and TV, which is like always good for me. But like, it was that like mind numbing type of stuff where like mm. I was so like dissociated from everything, you know? Yeah. Uh, and also I, I mean, good for them, but like I hated seeing like on social media, everyone like quarantine, like time to level up. Like if you're not, you know, working on, x amount of stuff all the time like you're wasting it because then i'm like sitting there in my bed like blanket wrapped around me, like not knowing what the fuck i'm doing um so i like resented that a little bit that like i feel like i wasted like the first half of my quarantine by like just doing absolutely nothing like but i mean it was tough man like bro it yeah hit people, it hit people differently and like as as like an introvert i think one of the hardest things about quarantine was that like i love matt and albert like they're my best friends i'm super happy to be sharing an apartment with them you know but um as an introvert it's tough because you know our daily lives like we go to work we come back like you have your alone time like throughout the day but with quarantine it's like i was around my roommates 24 7 bro it was, like, i everybody. understand <laughs> that took a huge toll on me like my energy was super low because it was like i was always in a social situation because my roommates were always around and again I love them. Don't want them to take that the wrong way. Like, um, no, but it's tough, understandable. You know, like being around people all the time, you know? Um, so I think that was really hard. You got to take uh, a break. Definitely. But after I finally like kind of picked myself back up a little bit and I started reading, I started like going on walks every day, reading, trying to write every day um, and get up a lot earlier. Cause I was staying up to like four 30 in the morning and waking oh, up damn. Like PM. Like I was just, like my whole, and my habits were not healthy whatsoever you know but i think i found like a pretty nice balance where like i'm getting up between like eight and nine and like mm, going yeah. on my walk reading for an hour like having my coffee and like getting to work and writing because i like the idea of like having everything that i want to do and need to do in a day um done like earlier so like the sec second half of my day is like it's more relaxing you're not stressed about like i didn't do this yeah. like, i didn't write today you know it's like i like getting that stuff done like bro as early yeah. as possible you know I feel that so much like you, you like I feel like once you build a routine also if you have a schedule I feel like I have like you know my plan or whatever I write down my schedule and I see it, it's like okay you have to fucking do it so like yeah I think I mean, schedule is super important it it's a game changer it really is and that's like we're like creatures of habit you do it for long enough and it just like becomes second nature for you exactly. same with the bad habits you do yeah you know you stay up I was staying up at like till four every night you know like sleeping in like that became a habit that i had to like break out of you know yeah it's like 
It's so important. And like, like you mentioned the point, like waking up early, I think if you get everything, like the stuff you want to get done or, or the chores or whatever, the stuff you don't, but if yeah. you get it out of the way in the morning, like you have the rest of the fucking day, the other half to do whatever. So yeah, it's so much better about, you know what I mean? It's so much better. And it's like, yeah, I, I think that's like the biggest thing I've like realized from college and, you know, especially this year, it's like, you got to keep it like a schedule and just, you know, get stuff done because I, I can be a sloth and I'll just like, yeah. you know, and I'll just pull up Netflix or, you know, pull up, you know, Smash Bros and just like oh, on Nintendo yeah. Switch and that that's game over. So There's it's like, so many hours went into yeah, it's a, bro, it's, oh my you God. Play Smash? Yeah, bro. You have online? No, I, I didn't know there was online. There's online yeah, on Switch. Online. Oh, yeah, bro, yeah. bro, like, you have a Switch? Yeah, you can do like, I think it's like a year of online for like six bucks or something. All right, folks, I'm about to play some Smash yeah, with David. To... Yeah, <laughs> bro. I... <laughs> bro, I'm Sorry, so man, down. So I'm sad. so like, down. <laughs> bro, yeah, well, one of my friends who lives in, because uh, when this all happened, I was in SoCal, but I was staying with him, and they have Nintendo 64. So they had, like, the original, like, Smash Bros and everything. Yeah. It's, which I was just like, so when I was really, because I used to play that when I was younger, but then I got the, you know, Nintendo Switch to play. But like that, like, the, like the 64, like, I feel like it was a lot fucking harder. Like even Mario Kart was really hard playing on it. Yeah, I was like, hold on. funny enough on, on, uh, my brother was here on, uh, for Christmas and New Year's too. He lives in Hawaii right now, but he came back for, for the holidays. And, uh, on New Year's Eve, we, uh, we had a couple of beers and he was like, you want to play smash? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I pulled out my switch and he was like, no, no, no. Like we're going to play the OG. Cause we still have our N Nintendo 64 and like a super Nintendo and stuff here at our parents. So he pulled out the N64 and he put like the amount of hours I put into like the newer version of, of smash. He put in like in high school and college into N64. So he was just like wolfing my ass and oh, I shit. Out, like lost, you know? And then after he beat me a few times, we switched over to, to ultimate. And then it was the complete opposite, you know, cause they're such different. Games. They're, they're like, so different. I didn't play the N64 one in like years. Yeah. That's, that's the same. And that's what my friend, that, that's only what they play is on the 64. So like, mm -hmm. you know, Zelda and all that stuff. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a whole different, it's a whole weird first the switch. I don't know. It's a whole like, I don't know, like yeah. same thing. I like Mario Kart. I was fucking up. I just like couldn't yeah, get my shit hard, together. Mario Kart's so much harder to. Bro. It, but, yeah. Uh... Yeah, man. That's fucking awesome. That's like dope that like, you know, uh, you place, you know, but you were talking about you and I were play games. So like. I, yeah, I, yeah. We love, we love playing games. We play Smash all the time. Um, I got into like unfortunately i got into like warzone last year so i was mm. playing a little bit of call of duty which i hadn't played since like high school uh um, yeah well like, that war was to me where i played for a while and i was like oh god like i'm addicted again so yeah i man. To cool it off that for a little while but yeah i love I love video games um i'm trying to love reading a lot more you know because i want to be a writer i should i should read i've heard um, yeah i've just been trying to read more um yeah any any books like do you have particular books you like are you just trying to read anything or is there type or specific books that you've yeah, been reading? Like, you know, I like novels for sure. Um, mm. I read Norwegian Wood for the first time mm. a couple months ago and that was like amazing. I love that. It's probably like my new favorite book, which is really corny. Uh, <laughs> I good. wanted to read, read more of his stuff. So I'm, I'm actually reading Kafka on the Shore right now, mm. uh, which I'm enjoying a lot. Um, yeah, I'm down to read like anything. So if you have suggestions for books, at bro, time, yeah, it, I'll um, send you books. Yeah, I'm down the, for whatever, man. The, the main book, like, I've been reading a lot. Like, I finished, I just finished this book called The Power of Now. Uh, you like that sounds familiar. It's very well known. It's basic. Okay. It's like, yeah, I've never read it, but I think yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, like London O'Connor or Sam Franklin. They mm -hmm. have recommended Sam Franklin actually sent me his books. It gave me as my birthday, a birthday gift. I was like, fuck yeah, but thank oh, you, man. Yeah. So I read that and now I'm reading like Alan Watts books, you know, philosophy okay, books. Yeah, yeah. So like, like basically like, like, you know, I've been on this spiritual, like yeah, I just yeah. even my shawl right now and like yeah, all yeah. this shit. Like, so yeah, I think those books are really cool. Like, like novels and all that stuff is like great. And you hear like mm -hmm. how they, but like when you like, read these philosophy books it's 
I don't know how to describe it to me. It feels like therapy in a way. Like, like yeah, they're, yeah. they, they, they talk to you. Like it's just you and no one else. And yeah. like in these books, they're like, all right, take a Like there's a symbol in the power of now. And that symbol means like, all right, take a break and reflect on what I've just said to you. And you, mm-hmm. and this could be, you know, 30 minutes, five minutes, an hour. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long you want to reflect on until you want to continue the next uh, passage. And it's like, yeah. It's really cool because it makes you think about stuff. And the main point of what the book is about, like, you know, focus on the now. Don't worry about the future because your future can't happen without your now. And it, yeah. it, it's so right. And then it goes into stuff like about like ego and like you need to be eco. And it's like, I don't know. I've definitely been trying to work on shit like that, but it's so fucking right. hard. And like, we're only human. So it's have like, you, uh, have you heard of the book Atomic Habits? Uh uh-uh, uh, what's that? It's, it's just like a book about it's one Roy lent me a while back and I, I read it during quarantine. And that was like kind of the first thing that snapped me out of like my bad routine. It was just talking about like, you know, the bad habits and the good habits in your life and like kind of really getting into like what makes them and like, you know, like the nitty gritty of that. Yeah. And like just like how to build healthy habits and like keep up with them afterwards. Cause like, I feel like it's easy to like create a healthy habit and like do it a couple of times, but yeah. it really helps you like, keep up with them and like make them long-term uh habits and yeah that book like changed my life for real I was like that's the first book that got me I was waking up in the morning like really early and I was going on a walk and stretching and then I was like reading that book and like taking notes um on it and it's like that really got me out of the funk that I was in initially um so you should check that out if you yeah I'll definitely because you make you you make a point like a huge point about like it's so easy to start healthy habits, but sticking with it is like the yeah. struggle. That's exactly. like every New Year's or whatever it is. Oh, I like, yeah. You know, I'm sticky with it. And then like after a month or so, I'm like, oh, I want to go back to my old routines. Like this is yeah. hard. Yeah. So, it's definitely tough. But. I, I feel that like I'll definitely uh check the book out. I'll definitely like, you know, we'll do do smash. I think I think we covered it all, you know. Uh yeah, this is pretty good, man. I think this uh, yeah, honestly, yeah. Thank you like so much, David, for coming on to Grantastic. Hey, thank you for having me. I had a great time. Yeah, bro. This was so this was so fucking fun because like yeah. um Grantastic is great and I, I love everyone who's come on this, but like it's so awesome to have like other perspectives of people what they're doing with their careers, you know, like a lot of them have been musicians and it's been great, uh, but it's cool. They have like a photographer, someone who wants to get into it or film and just having this, a different discussion instead of yeah, yeah. music or like last week was my mom, which was great. And it's oh, like, that's awesome. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. It was really great. Uh, just yeah, went yeah. into that. So like, yeah, it's so awesome. And we'll have you on again. It'd be great to get like you, Matt Haley or some shit. Like we just get yeah. like a, whole bunch and we just talk get Matt on man bro yeah matt i talked to matt matt's literally gonna come on some point this month we're figuring it out uh awesome. i'm gonna he, text him uh right after we get off this yeah like, yeah i did it man it's your turn yeah and tell him because it i would be awesome for real yeah, it would be but, cool to get like a little group one going though yeah like, i'm so down or even just with other people like he's like like the whole point of fantastic is like yeah tell people like self-love and like your worth and you could do anything, but also like, I want to connect people like, like use this, like yeah. a, you know, like, like, like Instagram is kind of like connect people, but like, this is like a podcast, like whoever comes on here. And once I do my group podcast with people, this is, it's a great way for an entrance or introduction for someone who you maybe didn't know how to meet or contact them. Yeah. So like definitely. organic. Yeah, you can say, good, this is this has been fun. I really like what you're doing. Yeah, thank yeah. you, David. Well, everyone, this was Grantastic with David. I hope you all enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>